thank you for your talk, uh, Ting. And you've been a wonderful student these 10 years. <laughs> Are there any questions? I have a question. Um, so, uh, Chan in Chinese is is translated to Song in Korean and Zen in Japanese is my understanding. Um, but I uh, am wondering, you know, how many Chinese characters is in the word Chan, and and what what's the meaning of that? What where does the word come from? What does it? What's the origins in in Chinese in in, in that language? If you know that, uh, uh, Chan is uh, short for Chana, and uh, Chana was the uh, Chinese pronunciation of the Sanskrit word Dhyana, D H Y A N A, and Dhyana means meditation uh, in Sanskrit. So Chana was shortened to Chan, and uh, you know then the Koreans pronounced that uh, Song and the Japanese pronounced that Zen, and uh, since uh, it was the uh, Japanese Zen, it was the first Zen on Western soil to be followed by a Korean uh, Son, uh, so that became the English word uh, Zen. So uh, we still say we practice Zen. Uh, we could say we practice Son, or we could say we practice Chan, or we practice Chana, or we practice Jiana. So, which one do you like? <laughs> yeah, they all mean the same thing. <laughs> um, are there any other questions? Yeah, Stan. Uh... I received a question uh, this week about uh, another form of meditation, uh, guided meditation. Mm -hmm. And in listening to you speak about uh, the classical forms of meditation and uh, how they were derived and named by the various cultures they were uh, developed in, uh, makes me wonder if uh, all forms of meditation are derivatives of this. And um, whatever comments you have about that. Uh, was your question, is your question about guided meditation? Uh, other forms of meditation, including guided meditation. You know, are they, are they really distilled from the classical form or do, are they things that were just independently uh, developed? Do, do you have any, any response to that? Well, there's a, you know, strong... Uh, Christian tradition of um, meditative prayer. Uh, St. John of the Cross was a uh, mystic, and so at least one form of uh, Christian uh, meditative prayer can be uh, traced uh, back uh, to him. Um, meditation uh, itself uh, is a word in the Latin meditare. Excuse me, I'm just a constant etymologist, I know. Um, meditare, uh, which is simply connected with the word uh, for mind. And meditare just means to think things over, mull things over. As we say, to meditate on. We are not talking about meditation practice. That phrase, to meditate on, that means to like roll it over in your mind, think it over, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, but it can also mean what... Uh, you know, we think of as uh, meditation, you know, a, a Zen practice, uh, Zen meditation. So the word itself in English is rather broad and could include any kind of meditative uh, tradition from uh, any kind of religious practice. Um, shamanic uh, practice, um, you know, is itself a form of meditation. So that's a completely different story. And I think Ed Kander could tell us more about that if anybody is uh, interested in it. Are you nodding your head? Yes, Ed? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 
So the most important thing is to practice, you know, whatever the form is. And of course, we have many different practice techniques, and the practice technique techniques can be called meditation uh, techniques. So, for instance, uh, you know, we have walking meditation. Um, we don't do it too much on Zoom. In fact, we don't do it at all on Zoom. <laughs> Uh, but on, uh, we, we still do it on our uh, Zoom retreats, uh, actually. So between rounds of sitting, say the sitting rounds are a half hour, uh, everybody lines up in their hands like this and walk in step and completely paying uh, no attention uh, to that process uh, while uh, continuing whatever your... Um, sitting meditation uh, practices. You can continue that uh, practice uh, when you walk and kind of coordinate it with your steps. I tend to coordinate my breath with you know, my steps in uh, walking uh, meditation. So that uh, brings um, you know, meditation practice into uh, an everyday action. Uh, uh, and in the same way, it could be uh, brought into uh, other forms of, you know, our everyday uh, activities. So when you're washing the dishes, yeah, completely wash the dishes. You know, uh, pay attention uh, to what you're doing. Okay, every plate, every spoon, uh, you know, uh, every glass. Yeah, that can be a, a kind of uh, meditation. So it's a, it's a very uh, broad word. A very broad concept, uh, but it is important that uh, our seated uh, meditation uh, is not the only form, and it can be brought and should be brought uh, into uh, other areas uh, of our life. So thank you for your meditation question. Uh, is there anything else? I'd like to follow up on that. Uh, are there instances when uh, in, in the Zen tradition where some of the Zen masters have used guided verbal meditation in during the Sangha or it has it always been silent? As far as I know, in the traditional sense, it's always been silent. Uh, who knows what's going on today in various Zen schools or various Zen teachers, and you know, maybe some of them somewhere are uh, engaging in some form of, uh, of guided meditation. Um, so I don't think guided meditation is, uh, I'm neutral uh, towards it. It's probably better than not meditating at all. And uh, I'm not familiar, uh, very familiar with it uh, at all. But I imagine that it could be a, a form of uh, instruction if it's done, uh, you know, with that intention. Uh, so uh, guided meditation uh, perhaps could be a matter of teaching or instilling um, some form of meditation practice on your own. I have a feeling that it's not uh, doing that, but uh, I'm really not well informed <laughs> uh, about uh, guided meditation. Uh, not for it or against it. I don't think it can do any harm, but I really don't think it should completely uh, displace uh, you know, traditional uh, meditation. Uh, it's you and your mind, baby. You know, that's all there is. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't think that subject has been brought up uh, at all. Um, you know, any kind of question answer period I've been involved in anyway. But what about you know, guided meditation? I'd say guide your own meditation. <laughs> I have a comment about that, Stan, if you don't mind. It's, I, I did it a little bit before joining the Zen Center, and I thought it was a good thing just to introduce someone to the idea of meditation and I don't do it now because 
I don't need to, but I think it's it can serve that purpose of for some people, including myself, of leading one toward toward the path, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Your actual experience um, kind of confirms what I thought uh, hoped might be the case. In fact, and it's it's an introduction to. A meditation practice that uh, can lead you to more traditional forms of uh, meditation practice. Has anyone else had any experience with, with guided meditation? Blake, you're raising your hand. Yeah, I've actually been uh, trained. Um, so I was made uh, the faculty advisor for Mindfulness and Law Society. And I figured, well, <laughs> if I'm the advisor for mindfulness, I should possibly take uh, courses on it. So yeah, I, I uh, last summer took courses on guided meditation. And it seems to be a lot more useful um, for attaining a specific goal. For example, uh, pain management. So for people who are in chronic pain, the guided meditation seems to be useful to kind of reduce that, uh, reducing anxiety. So if you have a very specific goal in mind, um, the, the mindfulness meditation can help with that. Um, but again, I, I consider that a completely different practice than, than what we do here. Thank you. I actually have a um, mindfulness meditation teacher. It's uh, this watch. So uh, this Apple Watch, maybe four or five times uh, during the day, you know, it'll give a little beep or a flicker on the wrist. And you look at it and say, take a moment for mindfulness. And then maybe even gives you uh, some sort of suggestion, uh, you know, for what, uh, what you might be uh, mindful of or grateful for or whatever. Um, I pretty much ignore it. Um, my sister uh, bought me this rot watch. She had had one for uh, maybe six or seven months. And she said, it's a good thing and a bad thing. She said, sometimes it feels like it's controlling your life. You know, do this, do that. It's time for you to stand up. You know, it wants you to be on your feet 12 hours a day. Um, and if you've been sitting for a long time, in fact, you'll probably tell me right now, I think it's time to stand up. <laughs> um, Thank you. Uh, Charlie just hit the bell. Okay, that's the end of this meditation period. <laughs> I actually think we have a little more time left. Uh, oh, I have a question. Isn't there a story about Zen Master Sung San was in the hospital and the doctors told him he should meditate? Yeah. What was that story? Uh, that's about all I know about it. Does anybody, Judy, do you remember this story better? Yes, I do. And after I uh, speak about it, Carol Schmidt has patiently had her hand raised. Um, yeah, so he had he had a serious, I don't know if it was a heart attack or congestive heart failure, but he was in the hospital. Um, and the doctors um, came in and they didn't know who he was, you know, that he was a Zen master or anything. And uh, the doctors or the nurses or somebody said, well, we're going to teach you how to meditate. And it was um, what he refers to as fix your body meditation. It was really, I think it was probably relaxation response. I'm not sure. But um, so they taught him how to meditate and he thanked them very much. And then he taught them how to meditate. <laughs> and Carol has her hand up. So Carol, oh, yeah. This is, I don't know if this is very appropriate or not, but I, I had an intention about doing this for a while and I did it for a little while, but I, I don't really do it anymore. But I understand there's a Zen teacher in your school who, I, at least I think I remember hearing this, there's a teacher in your school, in Quantum School, that would every day read one page of the Flower Ornament Sutra. Or the you know as a, and that to me is the guided meditation, you know for that it's not Zen practice, but it's it's guides me for that moment I'm reading it um, into the Buddha lands with all the jewels and the flowers, you know, and that's that's my idea of guided meditation. Uh, yeah, reading Thank sutras you. can be a form of guided meditation if you actually meditate while you're reading it. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Read it. <laughs> Uh, Judy, who is that in our school? You nodded your head. It's uh, Barry Briggs. Oh, it's Barry Briggs. So the Avatamsaka Sutra, the Flower Ornament Sutra, is 1,500 pages long. 
So this will take him several years anyway, <laughs> reading uh, one, one page uh, per day. Um, Dan, do you, can you say anything about Vipassana? They talk about Vipassana all the time, uh, form of meditation. I can't say anything about it. I okay. <laughs> know as much about it uh, as, uh, as I do. Is anybody, <laughs> anybody really familiar with Vipassana meditation? Okay, I think I will uh, refer you to online resources. <laughs> yeah, I do know a few things, but uh, I don't want to say anything about it and be misleading or misrepresent it in any way. So, uh, it certainly is a legitimate form of, uh, of meditation. Uh, the, the meaning of the word just means uh, perceive accurately, momentarily. So is there anything else? Well, we have four minutes left, but I don't have anything else to say. I didn't have anything to say to begin with. So thank you for your questions. Uh, and again, uh, thank you for your, for your talk, uh, Tim. Wait, I have a question. Oh. What brought you to meditation? You did. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, yeah, well, in the late 60s, you know, meditation was uh, very much in the air. And I uh, had this feeling I really wanted to practice. And from what I had read about meditation, it was uh, Zen practice, you know, that uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to learn. Uh, and at that time, there weren't very many uh, Zen teachers uh, you know, in this country. Um, so I kept trying, and I tried to meditate on my own and be a part of some impromptu, very small meditation group that might last three weeks, uh, you know, and there's no, no continuity and no real understanding and no teaching. It was uh, actually hard to find, uh, you know, even good books on Zen uh, back then. There, there were a few, um, but those were uh, my efforts. And when I came to the university um, here, you know, this is a new environment. And this is a university. There must be somebody around who practices Zen. So I, I, I posted a, a sign in the student union, and I reserved a room uh, in the School for Religious Studies. Uh, you know, to have uh, some sort of practice. And, um, the very first time, a few people came. The next time, a few more people came. And one of those people was the person who asked uh, this question. And she had her maroon zafu under her arm and looked me in the eye and said, is this where the sitting is going to be? And I said, oh, yes. So it really was you who got me started. And uh, thank you very much. And so my first Zen teacher. So now we have used up time enough, I think. Uh, but thank you all again. <laughs>